the marriage institution. Genesis chapter 2, verses 18 to 24, is the text for our consideration as we think about the ready paradise that God has prepared for Adam to live in. It was such a wonderful place of a boat, the best home that you can ever find. Dear friends, have you thought what it would be like when you would arrive in heaven? How the Lord would create, recreate everything anew? Would it be boring? Of course not. By the power of the creativity of God, heaven would be a most wonderful place for the people of God. And we are thankful to God that there is a destination that we are all booked on that ticket. And we are promised that we would arrive there safely in Jesus Christ. And therefore, the people of God, as people of God, we are comforted as we live on this earth, in this vast universe that we find ourselves in. Where do we find our bearing? How is life to be lived? Have you ever wondered? Well, God has a plan for you. And what is God's plan for you? Well, He has placed us into families. You realize that each one of us did not come or is not present on this earth without father, without mother. We came because God has wonderfully given through our parents the gift of life. And we are thankful to them for what they have done for us, how we have been a product of that relationship between the husband and the wife. That relationship is our focus today in Genesis chapter 2, where God would zoom in on the conditions of created earth and focusing on man and his life partner. God himself was the first marriage counsellor. He was the first marriage solemnizer, And he was the first to preach the marriage sermon. A most wonderful institution that God had created for mankind. The family unit. How did it come about? Why do we find ourselves in families? There is a, <clears throat> an origin to that. And Genesis chapter 2 tells us, at verse 18 is the text there, as we zoom in to look at the man Adam, whom God had created. The Lord said, the Lord God said, verse 18, it is not good that men should be alone. I will make him and help meet for him. 
You see, God had created the wonderful garden. God had created the wonderful living creatures, the animal world, the flying birds, and all the creeping things that are there upon earth. But there was none like Adam. He was lonely. He sees the beautiful garden and there was no one to admire it with him. He was there alone. And so the Lord said, it is not good that men should be alone. And that was the reason and the purpose for the creation of the women. And it's so interesting to understand how the Lord's plan was that God would make him a helper, a help meet for him. Someone that would be a companion with him. Someone that will be by him. Someone that will be with him. Someone that will be the, the part of him. This was what God said he would do. For verse 19 says, Out of the ground the Lord formed every beast of the field, fowl of the air, and Adam would name each one of them. But, verse 20 says, For Adam there was not found and help meet for him. There was in the paradise that God created, a lonely man. <clears throat> and the Lord knew and understood that Adam should not be alone. And so, <clears throat> verse 18 says, it is not good, not good. Right? The negative there, the word not, is a, stated as a matter of fact. It is not good that man should be by himself. And it begs the question, why? What is the reason? Well, for one, it would it seem he would not fully experience God in a deeper and a more meaningful way without interaction with another human being. He needed a companion to interact on the same level of intellect, emotions and moral consciousness that God had designed him. Right, you, you can spend that much time right, with your domesticated animal. Uh, you would feel happy, but it's different. Right? If it's different. We understand that. And so, in order to... Uh, alleviate that loneliness that Adam was, God made him a family man. God would now create out of the, uh, out from the body of Adam, Eve, Genesis uh, or Genesis 1 and verse 27 says, God created man 
in his own image. In the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. What was the significance of the person of Adam and Eve? Is that they were made in the image of God. Do you know that only man is made in the image of God? In other words, we reflect the lightness, the glory of the Godhead. The, character, the characteristic of God is imprinted in the image of God. And so, when God made Adam and Eve, He made them in His own image. And so it is said here to us that God created male and female. And chapter 2 gives us the detailed account of how the helpmeet of Adam was created. And it's very interesting. Here, our text tells us in verse 21, the creation account, how <clears throat> Eve came about, our text says, and the Lord caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept, and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam. Well, we said the first surgery. God caused Adam right, to sleep. <clears throat> sleep in a marvelous way where he would not feel the pain when God would extract a portion of his, uh, of his body, a, a bone out of him. Wow, that is really uh, uh, most uh, serious uh, piece of work that is done. A rib, a bone that is taken out of Adam. Wow. Here, the Lord wants us to know that, <clears throat> that Eve was made out of the rib of Adam. In other words, the man, the woman that was created is a part of the man. Adam said in verse 23, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh because she shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Very interesting. The closeness of that relationship. We know of the Chinese word for flesh. Right? The flesh, the word for flesh consists of two persons, right? Two ren. And the woman or the wife of a man is we call the man or the woman Nairan because she was taken out of the man. So if you would take out the bottom radical of the person and uh, place it outside, right, that's the wife that came out of the man, the Nairan. How did our ancestors understood and know this truth? Well, it is from the book of Genesis. 
It is recorded there. The holy truth concerning our origin, that we did not come from apes, but we were fearfully and wonderfully made by God. And so the Lord wants us to know and understand this wonderful uh, relationship right, between the husband and the wife, uh, how uh, it comes about right, through the creative work of God, the creative plan of God. And God wants us to uh, acknowledge and know right, that He is the one that made marriage. So, if you look at our text in verse 22, it is said, And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. The woman was brought by God to Adam to be his helper, to be his companion. And so the Lord wants us to understand how close that relationship is between the man and the woman. Matthew Henry uh, puts it very well. He says that the woman was made of a rib out of the sight of Adam, not made out of his head to rule over him, not out of his feet to be trampled upon by him, but out of his sight to be equal with him under his arm to be protected and near his heart to be loved. Isn't it true? That plan of God, the loving relationship between the husband and the wife, this was God's plan that they would be one because they are one. One, <clears throat> because it was God who brought them together. Do you realize that the life partner that you have is from God? God is the one that brings a person to our life. And it's interesting that as we think about that relationship, in a marriage that God has provided for us, it was a most beautiful of all the, <clears throat> the relationships that God had prepared for His created universe. Because this will be the relationship by which we would be taught our relationship with Christ, the church and Christ, the bride and the bridegroom, the closeness, the joy, the glory, the honour, the blessings of that relationship. And the Lord wants us to know concerning the unique oneness of that relationship. I hear uh, verse 24 tells us that the man should leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they shall be one flesh. Well, in this creation account, we understood 
why the husband and the wife is one flesh, how they are to they how they are from well how Eve is from from Adam and that cleaving relationship uh, the word cleave there uh, literally means to to be joined together and cannot be separated uh, there's a word that or there's a way that we word that we use to describe that 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 closeness and that's the word alloy alloy when we melt two metals together into an alloy can you separate them cannot separate that's the meaning of the word cleave the closeness of that relationship and the lord wants us to understand how great is that closeness and that closeness is firstly spiritual right it was god who brought the woman to the man so there is a spiritual oneness between the husband and the wife how important it is that they would worship god together adam and eve worship god together why right? because god was the one who brought about that helper so that he would have someone with him as he worships god there is not only a spiritual oneness right, but here it's speaking of the intimacy between the husband and the wife he should cleave the man should cleave unto his wife in other words that relationship is even closer than the relationship between the man the woman and his own parents a new family has begun and there is the one unique oneness in this new family that god has created so there is not only a spiritual oneness there is a emotional intimacy a oneness between the two and god would also bring them together for the purpose of procreation physical oneness and that was the purpose for god to create the family father mother and children that would come knowing god worshiping him together and so the lord wants us to see that this marriage relationship between the man and the woman between the husband and the wife is a cleaving together for a lifetime it will be a partner partnership it will be a companionship of a lifetime and so our lord in the gospels would say what god had put together let no man put asunder there is that cleaving relationship between the husband and the wife how beautiful how precious is that relationship remember sin had not entered this was god's plan this was god's way by which men and women would experience the fullness of life 
on earth. As they are joined together as husband and wife. And this was what God did there in the garden. He made a helper, a companion for Adam. A help meet. Proverbs 18 verse 22 says, Whoso findeth a wife, findeth a good thing, and obtaineth favour of the Lord. God gives. Do you pray for that God would bring you a help meet, a partner in your life? Well, as we read the uh, account of the creation, you realize that God is very much involved in the marriage institution. He is very much involved in the marriage covenant, in bringing two souls together to be the bride and the bridegroom. This beautiful relationship between the husband and the wife that God had created in the garden, instituted for our learning, so that we may understand His purpose, that it is God that instituted marriage and therefore marriage must be subjected to the will of God. This is how it is that God has deemed for the family to be. What has happened to the family today? That the marriage is in trouble in the world hardly needs to be pointed out, one pastor says. Many <clears throat> live together without marrying and fornicate promiscuously like beasts, holding marriage in contempt. Many others divorce and remarry. How then should marriage be? Well, the Lord has given to us the purpose of it. And it is for companionship between a man and a woman. And the Lord wants us to realize that this is the way. And that he has instituted it by his will and therefore he will be the one to see through the success of a marriage. Do you realize that? That it is a covenant that we made with God and that God will be the one to see the husband and wife through the marriage. The Lord wants us to take comfort, to be heartened by what God has planned for the family, for the covenant family. And as we observe, follow, obey God's blueprint for procreation, 
for companionship, for life, uh, we realize that we must thank Him, that we are not alone, that He knows our every need. And so as we study His Word and understand His plan in putting us into families, well, it is for us to understand that when we get to heaven, it will be the Father in heaven and His children. We are His children. That relationship. God wants us to cherish and know that this will be that one relationship that we will cherish in heaven. May the Lord bless His word to the strengthening of His people. Let us pray. Father, we thank Thee for Thy mercy, Thy grace in teaching us out of Thy word how it is Thy purpose for the marriage to be instituted between a man and a woman for companionship for procreation for thy own honour and glory that we may be able to enjoy our relationship with thee together to praise thee Lord, strengthen the family units in thy church help us to cherish help us to uh, nourish marriage relationships that it may bring honour and glory to thy name this I pray with thanksgiving through Jesus Christ our Lord Amen